I was listening to Matt Cameron the other day, and he said that any time you want to preach a good sermon, you got to get you got to tell a joke first. So I came up with some jokes, and Lisa won't let me tell them. She said they're all corny, but she told me there was one joke I had that's not corny. How's y'all glad to hear one not corny joke? Okay, and I'm going to say this is for Louie. This is in this is this joke's for Louie. Anyway, th- here's the joke. Th- there was this guy that that went out and bought himself a brand new Mercedes Benz. And he thought, you know, I always wanted to own one of these, just see what this thing will do. So he goes out in the country and he finds him an old country road and he fires that thing up to about 140 miles an hour. And he is just cruising down the road. And lo and behold, he looks behind him and there's a state trooper coming up behind him and he thinks well I'm already in trouble so I might as well milk it so he just keeps on at 140 just mile after mile after mile finally he pulls off state trooper gets out he is mad as a hot cake and he walks up to the car and he goes sir what do you think you are doing he said I have heard every excuse in the book, but if for some reason you can give me an excuse for this behavior, I'm going to get in my car and drive off. Man thinks a minute and says, well, you know, last month my wife left me and ran off with a state trooper. I looked behind me and thought you were bringing her back, and I just floored it. <laughs> State trooper got in the car and drove off, man. He just... <laughs> Woo! Louie, that you have to ask you. Louie, appreciate that. I just. Ain't God good? It's fun to laugh. It's good to laugh every once in a while. So I have to. Now, if any jokes I tell you, I have to take them through Lisa because I told some jokes the other night and, and Jackie finally started laughing. And I said, Why are you laughing? She said, They're terrible. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I got to take them through Lisa anyway. I told you that before you went out. Yeah. I did it anyway. I didn't mind. All right, anybody in here ready for the Word of God? Are y'all ready for the Word of God? Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And make you free. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. We're going to start a brand new series today. And like I said... We're going to believe God. Now, let me start off by this, by say, making a statement to you about my finances. The Word works. And, and you know, many, many times we think, well, I already own a business like Steve, and I've already got my clientele, and I already know everything that I need. And a lot of times we think there's a lid, and we think that either the business or who I work for, I work for someone else, and my salary is set, and there's a lid on me. There really is not a lid on you. You can, you can make more money than you're making now. And I'm, not, and I'm not talking about working harder. Thank you for the two that's rights. I'm not talking about doubling up on. Now, I'm not saying that God won't give you more work, but I will tell you something that'll be easy. The other day, uh, a couple of months ago, Lisa and I were at a, at a Mark Hankins meeting, and Mark was preaching. You know how Mark is when he starts preaching on money. And we sat there and thought about the fact that we've always tithed and we've always given offerings. But, you know, he said there, if, you, if you're not thinking about your offering when you leave, you hadn't given anything. So Lisa and I, how many offerings did we give in that meeting? Like three. Three. Not small. Not small. And when we left the meeting, we looked at one another and said, there better be a God. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we thought about it for a while. I mean, we went, you know, and your mind goes, I ain't never coming back. You know, that is just, you know how your head plays with you? Well, it was about a month later, we were eating at a bonefish grill with a friend of ours, and the Holy Ghost came on them, and they just said, 
okay, Lord. And wrote Lisa and I a check for $5,000. Yeah, that's what I said. And I sat there and this person just wrote a check and handed it to Lisa. No, didn't hand it to me. And I looked at that and I said, that was God. So we did it again. We said, let's, let's, do, let's do it again. Let's, let's, let's do this again, Lisa. And, um, man, we, we, and, and here was the, you know, I had just bought myself a new gun. Men, help me. God didn't put guns on the earth for the devil. He put them on the earth for Christians. He wants to, but, but I'm not satisfied with a new gun because I wanted a new trigger on it. Because the triggers that come on gun, they're just, that's just, they ain't no good. So I had, I sent it off to California and had to put an apex trigger in it. And that really wasn't enough. So then I went out and bought me some 10-8 sights developed by a police officer in Florida and, and upgraded it. And I got about $750 in this gun. And so again, I was at one of Mark Hankins' meetings and, and he starts preaching. He says, well, you spend money on yourself. You spend that kind of money on the gospel? I'm the, So I went, okay, okay, Jesus. So next time I went to a meeting, I wrote a check out for $750. And Lisa looked at it and went, that ain't enough. And she added two fifty to it, and I went, there better be a God. And, 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 and I wasn't ready for what y'all did when I came back here on on. On, on, after my hospital break. I wasn't, I didn't, I planned on having a dinner. You, you guys are out of the church. Now the church gave, y'all gave over $10,000 to Lisa and I. Thank y'all. That was so sweet. I wasn't expecting it, but that's why I want y'all to get richer. Now I'm going to tell you something. Just from my point of view, that, you know, it's a little humbling for someone to stand up here and take because people accuse us of well we're doing it for the money and you know and not everybody gets to take up offerings well how would you like to own a business where only half of the people who come in pay how long could you stay in business what if, what if only 6% what if you owned a restaurant and only 6% of the people that came in actually Paid for the meal. You wouldn't be in business very long. Well, listen, the, the, the tithing in America is at 6% of everybody who's born again. In this church, it's higher. It's probably a little over half the people in this church tithe. And some people tip. But wherever you are, don't get in condemnation. But let me take the Word of God and teach you how to use the kingdom of God and increase. Are y'all game for that? Amen. Now, we're not trying to get money out of you. But I'm going to teach you. Listen, if you think, any, if you think that any of my sermons are, are I'm getting money out of you, do me a big favor and send it to Kevin and Leslie McNulty. Send, send your money to Mary Fran. Let the word of God work for you. Uh, I, I don't care what you do with your money. I don't care. I'm just going to show you what Lisa and I have done. And I'm, I'm just going to believe God. So the more we hear about this, the greater your capacity to grow will be. Now, let me start off by making a statement to you. When, and and I'm, not, I'm not saying this to put anybody in any kind of condemnation. If you're a $10 and a $20 giver, your faith will never rise above a $100 bill because you're the one to put the lid on it. See, you, you, you judge God after your heart. And that's why God wants to break the thoughts in the, your, your mindset. See, when I first got saved, my, my first big offering was five bucks. That was a lot of money to me. Well, the next week I made 50 
Now, you understand, I'm the one that's, that made the parameters on God, not God. But, but that, was, that was where I was comfortable. I wasn't comfortable writing checks for 50 or or $1,000 then. It was a, there wasn't any way in the world. I, I only made $3,000 a year when I got saved. You know, five, giving five bucks, major amount of money. Well, it's increased every year. Now, now, there was a time in my life when, when I started writing checks for 100 or 200. And I'm talking above my tithe. I ain't talking about my tithe. Tithe belongs to God. That's his money. You ain't, you ain't giving anything when you give a tithe. It's already his money. But that was a big deal to me. I mean, it was very difficult to do because, you know, your, your soul goes, where is that coming from? How's God going to do it? I mean, you, your, your, your head is going to fight you. But you got to pick up the Bible that says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, what God calls men to give to your bosom. Yeah. Well, it wasn't long after that that people started, I mean, I'm not talking about just people walking up and handing me money because I'm a pastor. But I started having things happen to me. And then the other thing is, is that you have things happen to you that don't cost you money. There's things that money cannot buy. You know, we had a guy in church one time used to walk us in the back door at Disney anytime we wanted to go. At $100 a pop, that's a hunk of money. So there's always things that God does for you. So there was a time in my life where $100 was a big deal. But the Lord began to deal with me and go, you know, why don't you just put me, you know, I'm thinking, a thousand, a but once we once we started once we started giving thousand dollar bills away, they started coming back in thousands. I mean, all the stuff people have done for me lately have been in the thousands. I, I, I ain't ready for ten yet, but I'm I'm gonna tell you what I'm going there. I know Lisa ain't ready yet to write a check for ten, but I'm gonna tell you something. I'm looking forward today to just write a check for ten thousand dollars. And then the other day we heard about Mark writing a check to Brother Hagen for one million dollars. Good God Almighty, I ain't there yet. If y'all are, come on. Anybody in Second Corinthians yet? All right, let's start off with this. Father, thank you for today. I'm gonna start off a series, and I want everybody in this room to agree with me right now that you want us wealthy. The, the, the wealth of this earth is not for Satan and his kids. The cars are not for Satan and his kids. The nice houses are not for the devil and his kids. That's a lie. They're for the sons and daughters of God. You said thy will be done on earth just like heaven, and heaven ain't broke. And there's no reason for us to be broke this side of heaven in Jesus' name. And everybody agree with that? Say amen. amen. All right. Now, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Verse, let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Now, you are the one that's got to decide this. I'm not going to make a decision for you. I, no preacher should ever put any pressure on you on what you do. But I am going to tell you this. If God sends a rain on the crops you, sold, you sowed, if you planted an acre, two acres is not coming up. Thank you for your enthusiasm there. If you sowed beans, corn's not going to grow. So this is something you've got to purpose in your heart because faith is of your heart. But yet the Bible says, put me to the test. Now, I got to tell you, one day the Lord spoke to me and he dealt with me and he said, why don't you just put me to the test? And boy, I'm, wow. And so I think it was, you know, I started giving things away and I didn't tell anybody. I thought, I'm going to see if this works. Because, you know, preachers on TV, they always want to tell you what they did. There's a motive for that. Okay. But what if I'm giving and I don't tell you? 
then it, then it has to be my faith's in God, not, not my faith's in the congregation. Right? So, I started giving, and, and, and every time I gave something away, within a week it came back better. And I remember the day, I remember the day that, I think it was Kenny, where's Kenny? He's in the office. I remember the day that he was looking at my wife. I think it was Kenny. No, it wasn't Kenny. It was Kevin McNulty. I had a watch that had 24 different time zones in it. Well, if you travel around the world, it's nice to go click, click Moscow and hit a button and it changes. And it's a pilot's watch and it costs several hundred dollars. And um, so, no, no, it wasn't that what I got my story wrong. I had a nice watch. And I gave it to, 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 to Kevin, to somebody. One week after that, Sunday morning, I'm sitting up here. I didn't tell anybody. Guy walks in the door and said, I was shopping the other day and I bought a new watch. He said, and I got to thinking, I bet Pastor would like to have one of these too. And he opens a box and I went, oh. And, I, and he don't know. I'm sitting there. God's going, Told you. Because nobody knew that. So I wore that for a while. And then I gave that one to Kevin McNulty. Well, a f- last, was it my birthday or when, when did Jordan? Jordan w- worked at Wyland Galleries. And it was my birthday. And if he sold 10 watches, he gets one for free. And he got me a reactor. That's, that's, a, that's gold. That's not painted. This watch is good down to like 3,000 feet below. I mean, this thing, this is the ones the Navy SEALs wear. Yes, you're a SEAL. Isn't God good? You know, and yet, I, you know, sometimes I walk around the house. See, I've been believing for a new shotgun, so Justin just got my old one. I said, I've been shooting this pump for so many years, and I just called him up and said, you want a shotgun? He goes, yeah. I said, come get it. You know, it's fun. This is fun to walk around your house and start thinking, what do I have that somebody else will? And it's fun to do this. It's Take the nice stuff you own. Don't, don't give junk. If it's ready for the goodwill, give it to the goodwill. I'll come over here and preach. I never even got to my, ser- my scripture yet. Let each one of you give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity. God loves a cheerful giver. If, this, if, if someone's making you do it, keep it. Until you get happy, don't give. God is able, say this with me, God is able to make all grace abound toward me that I always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Now, only God is able to give you the grace to, to, for you to be rich. Now, we're not talking about you working harder. We're talking about a grace that comes on you from God that causes money to come. That's cool, is it not? That's cool. Now, this is scriptural, and I'm going to back it up. Go to 2 Corinthians 8, 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, stop. Now, if you watch too much TV, you wouldn't know that was true. Poor Jesus. Poor, Je- poor, Je- poor Jesus. Now, let's talk, let's talk about poor Jesus a minute. Y'all ready to talk about poor Jesus? When Jesus was two years old, kings and magi came from probably China. There were not three of them. They don't travel in threes. They travel in caravans. And they brought him. Everybody say Gold frankincense and myrrh. It does not say that one brought him a little gold coin. 
And the other one brought him a little bucket of frankincense. And the other brought him a little piece of myrrh. Nobody's going to get on a camel with their, all their family and all their wives. And these rich, f- filthy, filthy, filthy rich kings are not going to bring Jesus a little gold coin. They got to his house when he was two years old. Well, they got to the Jerusalem and they said, we came, to, we came to worship the king of the Jews. We came to worship the Messiah. You don't bring the Messiah a, a, a nickel. And then at two years of age, Jesus is sitting around his living room with buckets of gold. How do you say he was a poor baby? Now, why did God do that? Well, first of all, that's not Joseph's son. That's God's boy. And God did not require Joseph to raise him. Joseph is about to have to leave and go live in Egypt, and God just paid the whole thing. Camel, trip, house, everything. Now, let's, let's, let's go back, because we've got to stay on Jesus here just a minute. How many disciples did he have? Not a trick question. Good. Uh, Any of them married? Jewish families. Who was flipping the bill for 12 families? Jewish, Jewish families. We ain't talking two children in a van. We're talking anywhere from two to three to a dozen kids per Jewish family. How, how many of y'all know that's called a corporation? All right. Now, now, which one of the guys kept the money? It's not a trick question. You can talk to me. Judas. Judas kept the treasury. How could you be poor if you have a treasurer? Uh, and I need to ask you a question. Do you have a treasurer? Well, we got to get you one. Do you, do you have a treasurer? You are the treasurer. Kenny's got a bookkeeper. See, do you understand that if you have a treasurer, there has to be a... Thank y'all. All right, now let's look at one more thing. Judas, they thought on the night that Jesus was betrayed, was going to go give some more money to the poor. Folks, listen to me. Poor people do not give money to the poor. And the reason they thought he was doing it is because Jesus sent him to do it a lot. Now, why would Jesus tell you to give money to the poor and he didn't that'd be hypocritical and if he gave money to the poor and still took care of 12 guys there's no way this side of heaven Jesus was poor plus you remember we were reading last week about the guy ripped off the roof you go back that's Jesus's house I always thought he slept on the side of the road well you watch too much TV have another one. Well, we ain't broke. We might want to buy another one. (laughs) Now, let me make a statement to you about money. I know y'all love Jesus, but a a broke Christian is of very little value. Thank you. I didn't, I I mean, y'all... I feel the love coming at me all over the building. You know, when 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 a missionary comes and goes, well, I need to I need to pay for all of the the people in in Asia that I'm I'm inviting and I'm paying all their way so they can hear the gospel. You ten dollars is not doing anybody a whole lot of good. I don't mean to down you. But y'all need to write some big old fat checks. 
and you need to write them so that it still doesn't bother you. You need to be able to write a check for $10,000 and, and not even scratch your checkbook. You need to give to the poor. You need, we need another building. We can't, as good looking as I am, they're not giving it to me for that reason. Amen? So God wants you rich. Satan wants you poor. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think there's a money problem in the world? There isn't one. Because if you've ever been to New York or Vegas, there's no shortage of money. The only place I've ever seen a shortage of money is in church. You know why we don't use the plate anymore? Because I got tired of hearing coins clang in it. Jingle, jingle, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way, jing, jing. Folding money don't make no, don't make no noise. I'm going to hide. Rolls of money, I'm going to boom. I think, I think we ought to start passing a five-gallon bucket. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might become what? He ain't talking about spiritual stuff. That's not. When did Jesus become poor? When they stripped him and nailed him to a cross. If you'll go back in the book of Deuteronomy, there are three areas called a curse. Poverty is a curse. Sickness is a curse. And being spiritually dead is a curse. Christ redeemed you from the curse of poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. So he went to the cross and became poor so you could be what? Say it out loud, because I know some of y'all, that's a, you're almost scared to say it. Rich. Now, if you start talking this way, somebody's going to criticize you. But if, listen, if you're rich, do you care? No. Guy came to our house one time right after Lisa and I started pastoring, and I had bought Lisa that, that horse. Now, let me tell you what we paid for it. That, that horse was a registered Arab, and the sire was the, was the quarter horse champion of the world. It was a lady from West Palm Beach, had people calling her wanting the horse. Money was not an object. But the lady loved the horse, and, and it was a pet. And she wanted to make sure that whoever got my horse would love the horse as much as me. So she sold the horse to Lisa for how much? $1,200. Instead of 12000 And that was the beginning price of the horse. So say, say God blessed Lisa. Oh, yeah. So Lisa gets her horse of her dreams. We park it in the pasture. Christians from Word of Life Church came over one day. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, 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 not, I'm more sanctified now than I was. I'm nicer. I'm a lot nicer now. If you ask me how much it costs me to feed a horse now, I would just say, well, it's no big deal. But that's not what I said. This Christian, being a tither, had decided their tithe was going to oats. First of all, it's not your tithe, it's his. It's not your money, it's his money. And if he wants to pay the preacher, he can pay a preacher anything he wants to because you aren't the one running the kingdom of God, he is. So, so they asked me what it cost me a month to have the horse. And I very kindly said, 
none of your business. Now, I have matured <laughs> since that day. But, you know, the funny thing about it is the moment you start getting anything, see, you know, nobody ever asks about the mafia and where they got their money. Did you know that nobody ever goes to Disney and goes, well, how much it cost for this thing? I wonder, you, know, you, you don't go to Walmart and go up and go, what do y'all make a year? All y'all in this thing's for is the money. Every time I come out, y'all charge me. I mean, you run me through the cash rate. I mean, what are y'all in? Are y'all in this for just the money? And they'll go, yes. We're in it for the money. That's why we do it. We, let, let me ask y'all a personal question. Why do y'all work for the money? Anybody in here like a little more? Okay, so there's no hypocrites here. All right. Jesus went to the cross to redeem you from poverty. A Christian is supposed to be setting the standard in the world so that you make the world jealous, not the drug dealer. Now, I was in an airplane one day and I was landing in Sanford. And as I was coming on approach, I was sitting with a denominational uh, CFI, uh, 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 no, uh, it's either CFI or double I, was an instructor, was sitting in the right seat. And he's testing me because I'm going through an annual test. And Benny Hinn landed on nine left in a jet. This Christian next to me had a cow. In the plane. I thought, are you going to deliver that thing right here? And the conversation went like this. Look at that. Who's that? Do you know who that is just landing at us? No. That's Benny Hinn. What's he doing with an airplane? I said, I'm um, preaching the gospel in an airplane. See, the airplanes are not for the mafia. God is the guy that gave the Wright brothers the design for the plane. Why? So we can run drugs in it. So we can get the gospel go into all the world. God ain't broke. There's nothing about, do y'all ever think that maybe God might be a little excessive? Can I ask you a question? How much gas does it take to make a star? That's, I think 25 stars would be enough. But there ain't 25 stars. As a matter of fact, they've taken lately, they've taken a micro, you know, the, the Hubble, and in one inch of universe, they have found billions of galaxies, not stars. Somebody say, that's a lot of gas. That God don't have, the word shortage has never entered his mind. He just goes, I think I'll just make like a multiple cogillion billion balls of gas. And you're down here counting your pennies and there's 27 cents and the 28 cents. Say exceeding, abundantly, above. Can I, does anybody here know how many bananas fall off of banana trees in the jungles where there's nothing but monkeys? Most of them just are rotting on the ground. Now, it, now we need to stop that waste. That's, that's, ex, that's just too many bananas. There's too many bananas on the planet. By the way, if you've ever been down to West Palm Beach, there's coconuts floating out in the ocean. Quite frankly, there's just, there's really too many coconuts. 
That's Naples, not West Palm. That's the other side. Yeah, no, no, one single. They just float around, and, they, and they, you hit them with your jet ski. And by the way, you want to know what we, what we paid for it? None of your business. The jet ski. I'm just messing with you. Now, have y'all ever sat back and thought about this for a minute? God has zero concept of lack. And he raised up a bunch of kids called Christians that he's trying to get the same, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. You know, the day they came and talked to Jesus and said, you need to send all these guys home. I mean, the, the, we don't, I mean, these guys hadn't eaten. He said, why don't you feed them? Now, that's the wrong answer. I mean, that's just not what we were. He said, he said a year's wages wouldn't do it. He said, what do you have? One lunch. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm making a statement here. Because God has the ability to make something from nothing. If there ever was a lack of money, all he'd have to do is make some more. Are y'all out there? See, we, we have a mentality. See, socialism is based on the fact that the earth all of the money is a pie. Now, if I get a key lime pie and I cut eight pieces out of that key lime pie and I give a piece to Kenny and I give a piece to Cindy and I give a piece to Jackie and I give a piece to Teresa, but yet I take my knife and I cut a little bigger piece for me, that means Teresa's piece is going to be smaller. So she's going to go, that ain't right. And I go, well, I'm the pastor. I have a bigger piece of pie. But yeah, but you got my pie. That's the way Satan thinks. Satan can't create pie. But Jesus can. So Satan has to hoard money. God makes money. So God can make everybody on the earth rich and never scratch his wealth. Do y'all, I'm not talking, I'm talking about, let's even go deeper. What if Adam hadn't ascended and nobody died and everybody was on the earth, how many people would be on this earth? And had not the curse come in, they would all be, say, rich. There's no such a thing as lack. Lack is man-made. It's created. It, Y'all ever been to Rock Springs? There's no valve on it. Do you know why? Because a man didn't make it. If a man made it, he'd put a valve on it. I have another question. This is deep. Can y'all handle this? How do you waste water? Where do you think it goes? Well, you pump it out of the aquifer and you pump it on the grass, then it evaporates or goes back into what? How much water's here? The same amount that's always been here. Well, you need to have Tuesdays and Thursdays for watering day. You're wasting water. Well, it's going to evaporate and go up north and come down as snow and melt and come down the Mississippi River and just flood everybody. But it's still here. Are y'all thinking? Say this with me. There's no such thing as lack. I need some more. And when you get your first million, you don't have mine. And if I get a million, I ain't got yours. That's my million. My brother told me one time, he says, I'm working on my second million. I said, really? He said, I got so tired of working on the first one, I gave up and decided to start working on the second one. 
<laughs> Proverbs 8. Eighteen. Riches, this is, this is, everybody say, the wisdom of God is talking to me. Riches and honor are with me. Now, you, you would almost think walking with God was profitable. It is. Riches and honor with me, enduring riches and righteousness, my fruit is better than gold. Yea, fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. Let's keep going. That I may cause those that love me, say I love him, to inherit wealth. Y'all, y'all, don't act, y'all are not acting like that's true right now. I think we still got too many Baptists in here. Now listen to me. That I say, I love him. The wisdom of God was given to you. God is trying to make you wealthy. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think? Now, I, I, I used to work construction. Has anybody ever gone out to a construction site and seen the vehicles that block masons and carpenters drive? They're called Bondo mobiles. They smoke, they leak, and the back of them's full of beer cans. Anybody ever seen a construction guy struck? When I was a youth pastor, I got on my faith for a brand new pickup truck, a, a Toyota. Always a Toyota. I've had Toyota since 1976, and I still buy it. Because I want it, I want it, when I crank it, I want it to crank. I don't want to work on it, I want to drive it. Wisdom, there's some wisdom going around. So, I, I put out my faith, and I believed God, and I went out and got me a, a Toyota four-wheel drive. Now, you understand, that's the only new vehicle in the whole construction site. So a guy walks up to me and goes, whose truck is that? I said, well, it, it, it's my truck. Where'd you get the money? Is that why you fly to the Bahamas? I said, hey, stupid, you don't take drugs from the United States to the Bahamas. And I looked at him and I said, I tithe. And he cussed. <laughs> well, what kind of testimony do you think it is if you are making 11 an hour and you're laying block and you have a brand new truck and a pretty girlfriend? And he has a Bondo mobile and an ugly girlfriend. Now, what, what, what kind of testimony? But you know, these guys are sitting around there going, you know, we ought to start going to church. I still got nine minutes left. I'm still. Now, I'm going to take some Bible here, and I'm going to start. Go to Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. I want to prove to you from the Bible that everybody who ever walked with God, he made them rich. Can you all handle this? See, what I'm doing right now is I'm, if I can get your thinking changed, if I, I can get your believing changed, we'll get your checkbook to change. Abraham went up from Egypt. How many of y'all know that God told him to leave Ur of the Chaldees? God said, get out of here. I got something I want you to go do. And so in obedience, he left. Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all he had, a lot with him. And, Abra and the, what's the next thing it says after his obedience? Abraham was very rich, livestock, silver, and gold. 
And every time I see him, he's sitting on his backside under a tree. The goats are making goats and the sheep are making sheep and people are just bringing him money and he's just sitting there going, what are you doing, Abraham? Well, God told me to come down here and I just came down here and sat under a tree and all the animals just started kissing each other. And next thing you know, I just, I just have a whole lot of everything and I'm just like, um, I'm, well, I'm just rich. God's a Jew. Abraham's a Jew. We are adopted Jews. Are y'all ready? I want to, can I show you some more? Y'all don't mind a little more? Go to the book of Job chapter 1, verse 3. Now this is talking about Job. This is the guy that had nine months of problems. Only nine months, not more than nine months. So you, unless you were, oh, never mind. And he's talking, also his possessions, talking about Job, were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen. That, that's just too many oxen. What do you think he's doing with 500 yoke of oxen? Those are tractors. I, I would like to see the farm. 500 female donkeys, a very large household. So this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. He was the richest man in the whole eastern section of the world. Was. And the devil came along one day and took all of his money and caused him a lot of trouble. It only lasted nine months. Anybody in here have been through trouble? Say this too shall end. Now let's go to Job now, 42.10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. You ought to start praying for people. Indeed, the Lord is not a socialist. Because he did not divide up the wealth with all the people in the East. He gave Job how much? Buddy, when you're the richest man in all the East and God comes along and blesses you and says, I'll give him twice as much. Now that didn't even bother God. Not even a tiny bit. Some of y'all go, oh, I'm just Job. I wish you were. I want the tithe off of it, darling. Just cut the tithe. I want every one of y'all to be a bunch of Jobs. Bring it on. Now, why in the world would God do this for this guy? Well, he just wanted to. Y'all ready? I want to show you another one. First Chronicles 29 verse 1. Am I boring anybody? Everybody say, God wants me to be rich. And I'm willing. Therefore, King David said to the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great because the temple is not for man, but it is for the Lord God. Now let's keep going down. Now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all of my might gold for the things to be made of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron. This is just David giving. This is just David's offering. Did he start off this way? His family was the poorest in Israel until he said, yes, God. Do you think God wants people broke? Well, Job don't know it, Abraham don't know it, and David don't know it. Jesus didn't know it. Moreover, because I've set my affection on the house of my God, I gave to the house of God over and above all I prepared for the holy house, my own treasure of gold and silver. 3,000 talents of gold, the gold of Ophir, 7,000 talents. Some of y'all, all y'all got is one ring. I was bragging on what I had in my watch. This makes me look terrible. 
Gold for the things of gold, silver for things of silver, all kinds of work to be done, the hands of craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself to the Lord? He's, he just gave over, and, I, and I, I'm going to do the math one day. I have it written someplace, and I can't find it. He gave something like 20 or 30, I think it might have been 45, I think it was B, billion dollars in one offering. And, and he, listen, that's just his offering. That, he didn't give everything he owned away. Y'all, y'all got to help me with this sermon. Kenny, I'll just preach to you. You and me. We're just going to have revival up here. Go to 2 Chronicles 9. I got it. I'm going to go a hair over. The weight of gold that came to Solomon. Now, this was after David died. The money is just coming from everywhere. Because of the covenant. The weight of the gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. Besides that, their traveling merchants and traders brought all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. Is somebody just walking up and handing him on this? And, and King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammer gold, 600 shekels of hammer gold went into each shield. Y'all think my one gun was too much. And he also made 300 shields of hammer gold. 300 shekels of gold went to each shield. The king put them in the house in the forest of Lebanon. I'll put those over there. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it in pure gold. The throne had six steps and the footstool was gold. He's not Pentecostal at all. I know this right now. Which were fastened to the throne. There was armrest on either side of the place of the rest. Two lions stood beside the armrest, probably covered in gold. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side, six steps. Nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. And all of King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold, and all the vessels of the house. Now, David already gave all his away, and now this is stuff coming to Solomon. The force of Lebanon were pure gold, not one was silver, for this was accounted as what? Now, I'm going to read something to you. Now, go to, go to 21. For the king's ships of Tartar, which you knew not every three weeks, the ships came bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, monkeys, bananas. And King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Keep going. Keep, go to the next one because I want to find something here. Articles of gold and more 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 gold. Keep going because I've got to find something. Okay, here it is. And the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. They took all the silver that was given him, they just threw it out back. How would you like to be, oh, just take the silver, just, just throw that in the yard. Are you all out there? Did you go home? Somebody say, God ain't broke. Now, I'm going to read a story to you. I'm out of time, but I've got to read this story to you now. Luke 21. I'm going to, we're, now, I'm going to bust poverty off of you so bad right now. Jesus is sitting in the temple watching people give. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still sits in the temple and watches people get. Now, I want you to read. We're going to read a story right here, and I'm going to show you something. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts in the treasury, and he saw a poor widow putting in two mites. Now, that's less than a penny, but it's 100% of her income. I want you to know he did not chase her down and say, Lady, they're going to talk about us. Here, we all are rich, and we have taken this old woman's money. Now, let's pretend that God the Father saw it. What do you think happened when she got home? He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts in the treasury. He also saw a certain poor woman in putting in two mites. Verse 3. Let's go on. He said, I say to you, 
This poor woman put in more than all of y'all did. So is it wrong to take up an offering from poor people? No, the poorer you are, the more you need to be listening to me. Well, you just, we just don't have any money. Well, sell your cell phone and start giving. Do something. Truly, I say to you, look, go back up there. Go back up there. Let me read it. I say to you, this poor widow put in more than you all, verse 4, for all, for all of their, out of their abundance, put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, put in all her livelihood that she had. Now, now remember the story of Elijah, the rich, fat prophet? overweight, overpaid preacher. He's walking into Zarephath path one day and God said to him, you go see a widow woman. I'm going to have her take care of you. Now listen to the story carefully. He comes into town on a donkey, which was the Cadillac of the day. He walks up to a woman and said, hey woman, make me a cake. She said, I am about to make a cake with the only cruise oil that I have. I only have a little oil and a little meal, and I'm gathering two sticks, and me and my boy are going to eat it, and then we're going to die. And the fat preacher, the overweight preacher, the TV evangelist said, make me one. Boy, if that had hit the news. Preacher takes old woman's last pennies. And flies off in jet airplane. See, you got to break this mess off you. This, this is bondage. And it's in your head. So he said, you make me a cake. Why did the prophet say make me? Because when you tithe... Once the 10% is holy, the 90 becomes holy. If you eat the tithe, you cursed the 90, and the 90 belongs to the devil. You just gave the devil your whole paycheck. Whatever you set aside to God causes the rest of what you have to become sanctified. So she goes home and makes that cake, gives it to the preacher. The oil never ran out. The mill barrel never ran out. That woman with the two mites went home, opened up her cabinet after Jesus saw that, and the cabinet was full of food. The mill barrel, that woman would make cakes from that day forward, oil from that day forward. Her lamps never ran out of oil. She never went back to the store after that day and bought anything. Folks, God is God. We got to get a revelation here. This book is true. That's a kingdom book. That, That wasn't written by the devil in the world. The God that took one boy's lunch and fed 5,000 men, he's alive. He's seated at the right hand of God, and he's still watching offerings. It ain't your job. Don't put your faith in your job. Get your faith out of your job. Now, let's quote one scripture, and i got to close. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above. Say, that's a lot. Above would be good. Abundance above would be good. But God, he don't know. See, God don't have, he has no concept of above. And he has no concept of, of abundance. He, do, he makes, that's a lot of gas up there just in the sky. That's more than your car will ever use. See, God ain't broke. Poverty is only in your head. God is waiting on you. Isn't that awesome? This is incredible. Now, I just said this a while ago, and I'm going to say it to you again. If you think I'm preaching this for me, Don't give me anything. I forbid it. 
but start giving. God can't bless nothing. And the broker you are, the faster you need to get up off your blessed assurance. I like what Kenny said a while ago. When I got saved, Kenny, $8.30 was my tithe. And I didn't give eight thirty one either, buddy. But the day I gave above was five bucks. I made 50. In one year after reading Kenneth Copeland's Laws of Prosperity, I bought my first new car. It was a Honda Civic. It wasn't a Toyota pickup yet. But honey, I had a Rambler that, that, that someone had up north with salt. There were no fenders. Che, do you remember the Rambler that you couldn't get in the back seat because you would fall on the road? Do you remember the green Rambler that there was no floorboard? Be and I, had, I told you not to get out of your seat because you would fall in the road while we were driving. The floor was eaten. The muffler had completely fallen off. All of the fenders were gone. And I started tithing. I get one year later. Do y'all, do, have y'all ever, do, do y'all know what it smells like to sit in a new car? I would just go out at night and close the door and just, Oh, it's a new 13 miles on that car. Now I had an AM radio, and buddy, let's see a court, and that's all the faith I had. But it, but it was new. I've come a long way since that day, baby. I, I, I don't know how to, do you want me to give an altar call for people who are not saved? Real quick, come on up here. You're having a hard time sitting there? I have a hard time sitting Oh, I'll get that in a second. You need this. I do need this. Put Malachi 3.10 up there, please. The day you get tired, it's over. Okay. Let me read. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this. That's the old covenant. But that's the old covenant, Pastor. That's the old covenant. That's the Old Testament. Well, it is. Go to Hebrews 8, 6. You're getting in the next week, sir. Go to Hebrews 8, 6. I, I, I'm sorry, but I just, I just, I got to say what I hear. Hold on, because you're not, hold on. But now, Hebrews 8, 6. But now, he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Inasmuch as he also, a mediator, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which is established on better promises. That's why Paul said it in, in 2 Corinthians 8. What was that scripture we just read this morning? I can't even think straight. He said, let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Because the Old Testament was by law. But the New Testament, we're on better promises. Promising better return on what you sow. See, the new thing is better than the old thing. So, so last year, when we were in here on a Sunday night praying as a church, I kept hearing the Lord say the money 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 lots of money lots of money I kept hearing money 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 the ladies have been hearing it on Monday night well when we were at our women's um, gathering last summer last fall I and we were praying one morning and, in, and under the anointing I kept hearing the word money money I said oh my god pastor Lisa do you remember this I said there's a lot of money coming there's a lot of money coming there's a lot of money coming but and just last Sunday when we um celebrated the resurrection day, the Lord said to me that Monday morning, he said, everything's changed. He said the same thing to you. You said it to me that Thursday night when I came in for practice. Everything from last Sunday, from now on, the now, I'm telling you that by the power of the Spirit of God and what he's saying to the church in the whole world, right now, there is nothing that's going to be the same anymore. The time for the more money coming into the body of Christ is now. So you are not in the old. You're now in the new. And if you're going to start sowing now, you're going to begin to reap now 
because God said now it's going to turn and never be the same. Why are we on the earth? We're here to get the gospel out. Broke ain't doing anybody any good. So in order for God to get his vision out, he has got to bless somebody. Do we have a candidate in the room? Now, y'all see, according to your... See, you didn't get born again until you heard the good news. You didn't get filled until you heard the good news. You're not ever going to break away from the world system until somebody gives you some good news and you have to go, I accept that. I'm taking that good news. We're not relying on just my paycheck anymore. We're going to start putting our faith in God. Now, in order to operate this way, you must trust him. If he tells you to buy stocks in Coca-Cola in 1945, listen to him. When gold was $200 an ounce, people listened to him. It was good investment. That you're, when you give, you are not giving it away. It's still your money. Come on, y'all. Y'all knew better than that. Folks, when you're giving money, it's still your money. It's just that you've invested it in the KOG. You've invested it into souls. You've invested it into people. The money that Lisa and I gave to Mark Hankins, that's still my money. It happens to be in Cuba right now. It happens to be in South America right now, making a return a hundredfold return on my gift. still my money. Anybody in here tired of being broke, stand up. We're going to pray. Can I go on with this next Sunday? Because I want to talk next Sunday about this one fact. It's not scriptural to pray for money. The earth is yours. The gold is already the wealth is already yours. Somebody has stolen it from you. Lift your hands up to God and say, Heavenly Father, today I heard some good news. I'm thinking about this. I see it in the Bible. You make people rich. I want to be rich. Heavenly Father, help me right now. Lead me and guide me into what you want me to do. Because it's obvious you're trying to bless me. Pass my job, pass my business, and I'm talking things that money can't buy. Satan, get your hands off my money. I'm a giver. If you haven't been giving, say it by faith. I'm a giver. And it's given back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. God causes men to give to me. Starting today, I call myself rich. Jesus died to make me rich. Come on, God. Let's go. Hallelujah. Now, let me make a statement to you before. If you're raised around church, you, you, this is going to be hard for you to handle. Understand something. The reason I'm going to keep going, because I got to get your head changed. And I know some of y'all are going to walk out here today and go, well, I never heard anything like that before in my life. The poverty mentality began in the Catholic Church. And Satan took the money from the church and put it in the world. 
It's a lie. You can't find poverty. You cannot find a vow of poverty anywhere in that book. As a matter of fact, there's more in your Bible about money than any other subject. Can I challenge you to do something? Get the book of Proverbs out and start this week. And take a yellow highlighter, orange, red, green, whatever. Start underlining everything it says about money. I'm going to tell you something. The closer you get to God, now he'll bless your socks off. Why did he make America the greatest nation on the earth? Because we put God first. We, up until, uh, until a few years ago, 85% of all missions money came out of 5% of the world, the U.S. We have been the greatest nation on this earth because of our sowing into the gospel. You have the wealth you have today because of your forefathers giving. Don't leave your grandkids broke. And don't stay broke. The faster you get a, a wealth, see money is not bad. Money's a tool. If you're, if you're a carpenter, you need a hammer. If you're a race car driver, you need a car. It's just a tool. But it's a lousy God. But if Jesus is God, it is an awesome tool. And a righteous man uses money righteously. So when you show God, I'm righteous, he'll, he, the things he'll do to get money in your hands. And he'll make you rich.